morning. Well, good morning. <clears throat> good morning and God bless those of you that are here. Pastor Murray here and we're doing things a little bit different today. We are actually speaking from our home, of course. And this is our first service as a, um, we're sitting in and actually giving, going to be sharing with you from here. Uh, in lieu of our eight o'clock service that we normally have at uh, our Hinesville location. I want to ask that you would call a friend. Uh, let's share the text this morning. We welcome each and every one of you. I hope everyone had a prosperous, a happy, an excited, jubilant uh, Christmas. But here we are the day after Christmas, and we're so thankful for um, this opportunity that we have to share with you this morning, we're going to be sharing with you this morning. We're going to talk about the attitude of gratitude. That's our topic this morning, the attitude of gratitude. And normally I would have it on the screen, but uh, time did not permit me to do all the things that I would normally do uh, to uh, help to get the message across and keep your focus on uh, what we are doing or what we are going to be sharing with you. God bless you. I see my wife is on this morning. Prophet is forward. God bless you. Thank God for you. You all witness and, and uh, I want you to do a little uh, social media evangelism this morning. God bless you, Brother David Bradley. Glad to have you. Amen. Let's call a friend. Call some, actually call somebody. Let them know. Remind the saints that there's service this morning. Hallelujah. And of course, it won't. Immediately after this broadcast, we're going to be actually having in person worship in our location in. Uh, Savannah, 1402 Harmon Street. I'm going to be calling your attention this morning to the book of Colossians. I'm going to start there. Colossians, the third chapter, beginning at verse one. Colossians, the third chapter, beginning at verse one. I'm going to start there. And again, I'm going to be talking with you about the attitude of grat gratitude, the attitude of of gratitude. We get into, uh, give you some um, explanation to all of that uh, in just a few minutes. Colossians chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Colossians, this is the Apostle Paul, of course, 
Colossians chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Verse 16, I'm skipping down to verse 16. The Apostle Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in, a, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and, and, who's, and whatsoever you do in word or deed. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Again, we welcome uh, Sister Walter. God bless you. Glad to have you this morning. Let's share. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to get into this. Probably won't be talking uh, a, a lot about or mentioning or going conversing with you um, in the comments section this morning. I will uh, every now and then uh, we will look at the comments. But let's get into this. Uh, I wanted to talk about the attitude of gratitude this morning because uh, it is my uh, conviction uh, that in this this season, this year, this time of the year, uh, many people. Uh, would go into oppression, some would be stressed, some um, may not feel uh, as welcome or as, um, what is the word that I'm looking for, they're, they, they're sometimes lonely due to certain um, situations and circumstances that is going on in their lives. And of course, again, here we are the day after Christmas and uh, gifts have been unwrapped. Some have been blessed more uh, than others, no doubt. But um, you've heard me say, say it many times before. It's just a blessing uh, to give. Of course, we talked last week about the joy of giving. Uh, but uh, in this special season that we find ourselves in, um, we uh, sometimes, many times, oftentimes, uh, however you want to look at it, some are going through various mental challenges uh, due to loneliness. And some, uh, even though we're celebrating uh, the, the season of Christmas, where we know that Jesus is the reason for the season, and even uh, many Christians uh, sometimes will find themselves depressed. But I want to I want I want to give you something to think about this morning because the very fact that you are here and God has given you the gift of the present. He has given you the gift of life. You're watching me, watching me this morning in your right mind. You may not have uh, received anything, but the fact that you are here, it is a blessing. And your attitude, as some folk will say, uh, as it relates to uh, who you are as an individual, your attitude determines your altitude. Uh, altitude in the sense of... Uh, been able to go beyond where your present status is. You don't have to stay in a place of depression. Um, the Apostle Paul says that he thought himself happy. He says, I think myself happy as he was talking to uh, King Agrippa. And so as we get into this, having a attitude of gratitude, God bless you, uh, Brother Larry. Welcome. God bless God bless you, man. Merry Christmas. Hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas. God bless you, Sister Preston. So um, the attitude of gratitude is not a seasonal mindset. It's not, it's not per se that we're grateful, we're thankful for all the gifts uh, that we have received and um, even having the ability to exchange gifts to be able to uh, be a resource or a blessing to someone else. 
the season or the attitude uh, of gratitude should be a permanent fixture in your mind. And this is very, very important that I would talk to you, talk to you about it today for those that would listen or to hear this broadcast. We have uh, here recently, uh, we've been made aware of several people that have committed suicide. In fact, um, the Avis, uh, one of the ministers, the associate ministers in our church, uh, his nephew uh, took his life last week. In fact, they probably are traveling right now, headed home towards that, uh, that home going service. But that's not the only one. Just this week alone, many uh, people have taken their lives. The thing that I believe that can keep us out of oppression, out of depression, and being stressed and overwhelmed at any given time is having an attitude of, of gratitude. Again, it's my uh, personal conviction concerning uh, the mindset that we have. It is uh, healthy for us to, to think about just how good God has been to us. I want you to think about how, how God has kept you and how God has uh, preserved you for these last 12 to 24 months. Um, certainly, God has kept us through these different strands of viruses and uh, some of you, no doubt, probably, more than likely, you was infected by the virus. You had it, but the, but the Lord, in his grace and in his ability to heal and deliver, whatever the case may be, uh, you're still here. That's a blessing in and of itself. I want to uh, just challenge you to think about how blessed you are not based upon the gifts around the tree, but the fact that you are in your right mind. Praise the Lord. We're getting ready to exit out of 2021 and go into another year. And the Lord has kept you. The Lord has been kind to you. He's been gracious to you. And um, I tell you, um, certainly I've enjoyed these last a uh, few days this week, I've had a chance to get away with my wife. Um, I thank God for a, a strong wife, a wonderful wife. I give uh, give her her uh, kudos this morning. I thank God for a wonderful church family. I thank God for family and friends that love me. You got to think about uh, who you are. You got to think about the people that love you, the people uh, that you mean so much to. If you allow the enemy to get in your thought process, if you allow him to get in your mind, you you can become depressed. You can become oppressed. Uh, the spirit of uh, worry will come upon you and uh, you'll find yourself uh, thinking that nobody cares for you. I came to tell you this morning uh, that you are more special than you think you are. You have to imagine those individuals that take their lives, they have to consider uh, the selfishness behind that um, because so many people are left hurt and distraught because they no longer have access to those individuals. So it's a, it's a tragic thing to even think or to consider taking your life. But I'm telling you, this is a spirit that is running rampant in uh, society today. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually to be in my mouth. So you want to have an attitude of gratitude, which is to have a attitude of being thankful for the things that God has done for you, how God has kept you. Webster defines the word attitude as a bodily state of readiness to respond in a characteristic way, characteristic way to a concept or a situation. Again, um, as you think about how good God has been to you, um, and it doesn't take a lot to think 
uh, to realize that God has kept you, God has maintained you, God has preserved you. Uh, just look around. My God, if you're sitting in your home, you can look out the window, look in the garage and see that uh, you have uh, modes of transportation. Praise the Lord. You have a roof over your head. If your children or your grandchildren are present, you are blessed and people love you. I want you to know that I love you. Praise the Lord. I love you. My wife and I, we cherish uh, you. Uh, we, we, we appreciate you so much. Much of what we do, what our lives consist of, is ministering to people even beyond our own necessities, even beyond uh, the things that we desire to do. A lot of times uh, we are restricted from doing what we want to do because we are servants. Praise the Lord. We are here to serve. We are your service. And we do it, amen, uh, with a high level of appreciation and thanksgiving, realizing that God has entrusted us and you have trusted us with your lives to, 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 uh, to build you up, to, to challenge you in the way that you should go, uh, to remind you that God is faithful, to remind you that God is a sustainer of life, that God is a healer, that he is a deliverer. You ought not to lean to your own understanding. That's one of the things that one of the wisest men in the Bible told us, that we should not lean to our own understanding. Sometimes in our own mindsets, our own perceptions, that we can be our most, uh, 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? We can be our worst enemy when we sometimes are thinking about who we are and perhaps uh, no one cares, but the devil is alive. You are loved beyond your wildest dreams and imaginations, and you mean something to God. Praise the Lord. You mean something to uh, those that love you, your, uh, your children, Praise the Lord. Your your and uh, your 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 mother and your father, your grandparents, uh, your friends. I want you to know that even uh, today, as we talk about this this morning, you are somebody very 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 special. During Christmas, we remind ourselves. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the love. We remind ourselves of the fact that many people are struggling with mental issues during this season. The reason behind the claim that depression rates and suicides rise during the holidays is that holiday cheer amplifies loneliness and hopelessness in people who have lost loved ones. And that's a very true statement because even now, I'm talking to some people now who have lost loved ones. Even in the midst of uh, your loved ones transitioning, praise the Lord, God has still been faithful. God does not make any mistakes, praise the Lord. And, and, and if they died in the Lord, as we shared with you a few weeks ago, praise the Lord, uh, there is coming a day uh, whereas we're going to meet, meet together, whether they are dead or whether they are living. Paul says the Lord himself is going to descend descend from heaven with a shout, and we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. And those that are living, those that are on the earth, we're going to be caught up. Praise the Lord. There's going to be a great gathering of the saints. So it's not a loss. It's not necessarily a loss. It just simply means that uh, the, those individuals that are no longer here, they have shed their earthly suit. They have transitioned. Uh, the Lord has called them. The thing that we should be careful about, the, th the thing that we should be mindful about, um, that the Lord is going to one day call our number. Praise the Lord. We have to be ready. We have to be rapture ready. We got to be ready when our time comes. And having an attitude of gratitude helps you to prepare for that day. Having a heart of thanksgiving the scripture says, in all things, give thanks. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks 
unto the Lord, hallelujah, for his mercy endureth forever, and he is good. Glory to God. We serve an awesome God, saints. I'm telling you, regardless of uh, how many gifts you receive or did not receive, the fact that you are listening to me right now is, is, is enough uh, credit and enough reason to give God praise and to have an attitude and gratitude. And this is what when, this is what happens when you have an attitude of gratitude. You're actually thankful. Those individuals that have an attitude of gratitude are really worshipers. This is, this is what stimulates the worshiper. If you consider yourself to be a worshiper, um, you, you, you magnify the God of the Bible, the one that is responsible for you having a, a life, the one that is responsible for taking care of you. You, you, you. you worship him in the beauty of holiness. There's nothing like a worshiper because of when we worship him, praise the Lord, it stimulates or it has its origin. The worship that we give to God, it has its origin from realizing that God has been good to us, that God has been faithful to us, that God has sustained us. These last 24, 12 to 24 months, I'm so thankful. Y'all, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm not bragging, uh, but I want to thank God that I, I, have, I have not even had a COVID test. I have not had the symptoms. The symptoms. I've simply followed the guidelines. I've been careful. I've been mindful. I've been prayerful. Praise the Lord. And yes, let me tell you this. I've been vaccinated. Glory to God. Now, there are some people that are saying that this vaccination is, is, is the emphasis of the mark of the beast. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you that you got to do what deems necessary to take care of you if you want to have longevity of life, even if we did it in ignorance. See, we listen, listen let me tell you something. <clears throat> you cannot listen to everybody. We This is not... We, this vaccination is not, is not a reason for the saints to argue and fight about rather not this is a mark of the beast. No, 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 no. Listen, I'm just thankful that I am alive. Praise God. I'm thankful that I have the use and the activities of my limbs. I'm thankful that my God, that I spent time with my grandchildren on yesterday, this past week, I had an opportunity to have a game night with my family. I'm thankful that I'm here for my children and my grandchildren. And I have a loving wife. I have a loving church family. God has blessed me. There's so much to be thankful for. Now, if I thought about it, if I thought about it, there are some things that I feel like uh, that I should have in my possession, but I don't have them. But I'm not worried about what I don't have because as long as I'm here, uh, my season is yet coming. Glory to God. I want you to think about how good God has been to you. Glory to God. Second Samuel, the 22nd chapter, verse 20 says, Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. Glory to God. That's 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 what that's what uh, people that are grateful and and thankful do. Praise God. They sing songs of Zion. They have a song in their heart while they're riding in their cars. Praise the Lord. They have things that they can think about as God has blessed them. Now let me get to the text. Uh, let me get to the text uh, so that we can share with you. And I'm just going to give you a little of what I'm going to share with um, the saints in Savannah on this morning. Again, this is the Apostle Paul. And of course, Paul went through, went through so many things. If you ever want to be encouraged, read any of the epistles of Paul's because he testified of things that he'd he been through. 
He was not always a worshiper. He was not always in support of the church. But uh, God transitioned him when he was going um, on, when he was on the Damascus, the road to Damascus. Hallelujah. And he had an encounter with Christ. So he says here, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. This is what he's saying here, because many people are saying that they are Christians. <clears throat> many people uh, testify, praise the Lord, and some people just talk. But talk is cheap. Testimony is different from just conversing with people about something that you are saying, but there is no validation to support what you're saying. But when you testify, it actually means that you've gone through a test. You've had a trial and the Lord has brought you through that trial. And he just didn't bring you through it just for the sake of you going through it, but he brought you through it so that you can testify to someone else. In conversations, people like to talk so that they can just be a part of the conversation. But talk is cheap. Testifying is when you're actually going through something. And listen, we should take joy in the trials that we've been through because they come to make us strong. Talk and just share with people uh, and, and just trying to say something because they're saying something, it does nothing for you. But when you are actually uh, talking about what you've been through and how God has healed you or saved you or preserved you, that's a reason to give God thanks. And so if you then have been risen with Christ, uh, to be risen with Christ means to take on the characteristics of who Christ is. Because what happened, if you know <coughs> about the resurrection of Christ. You know that they, they put him in the ground. Praise the Lord. He went down, but he got back up. Glory to God. You ought to testify. Put that in the comments. My God, he went down, but he got back up. Put it in the comment section. He went down, but he got back up. That's what Christians do they go down or they have they have down days but listen just because you have a down day it does not mean that your life is over we're going to go through uh various situations and seasons in our lives my god but anytime you are risen with christ it does not mean that you are down just to be down but you are actually experiencing something that causes you to look to christ or to look to god to know that if he got up you can get up too Hallelujah. Paul says, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. This is what Paul is saying. I just don't want to know of him, but I want to know what he's able to do when I allow my life to be in compliance with his will and his word. If you go down, you can get back up every day. My brother and my sister is not going to be peaches and ice cream. Let me, tell, let me just say that again. Uh, every day of your life is not going, God didn't promise you happiness every day, but he did promise you that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited in here. I'm telling you that we serve an awesome God. So he says, if you then be risen, be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. Hallelujah. El the old church used to sing, they used to sing a song, elevate your mind and let's go higher. Come on, come out of depression. Come out of oppression. Hallelujah. D listen, even if, listen, I will advise you if you have folk, if you have people that all they ever talk about is oppression and what they're going through. You don't need to be around those folk because that spirit is, my God, it can get on you. You don't want that spirit on you. Don't Listen, I don't want to be around oppressed people all the time. I'll pray for them. Yes, yes, I'll pray for them. I'll lay hands on them, but I don't want to hang around depression. 
Hallelujah. I don't I don't want to I don't want to be in the atmosphere where everybody just complaining and and moaning and groaning what I don't have and 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 what somebody did to me. No, 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 no. I'm not going to be around those kind of folks. I'm going to give God praise. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, "Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me." I want to tell you that God has been good to you. Glory to God. Got a big bottle of water here. So he says, he says, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection. Praise the Lord. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Let's just park here for a minute. This is what the Apostle Paul is saying. Set your affection on things above. Elevate your mind. Hallelujah. Where is God? Look to the hills from which cometh your help. Look up. Get your mind, get your mind out of that downward uh that downward direction. No, you got to you got to look up. You got to look to God. Hallelujah. You got to you 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 got to look up because that's where your help comes from. Don't set your affection on the things that are on the earth. There's a lot of things on the earth. <coughs> praise the Lord. That probably I desire. But I'm not going to set my affection on these things. Praise the Lord. Well, why, Pastor? Why, why should not? Why shouldn't we set our affection on the things that are on this earth? Because at some point in time, you're going to depart from this earth, and what's really going to matter, Hallelujah, is what is above, Hallelujah. That's that's what really is going to matter. Not not worrying about. Things that are on this earth. When you talk about things, you talk about people, places, and things. I learned that <coughs> in um, high school, in middle school. A noun is a person, a place, or thing. That's what a noun is. A person, a place, or things. And Paul says, set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. This is what uh, Matthew says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness <coughs> and all these things that's going to be, they would be added to you. Watch this now. There is a way of having things if that's your desire, there, there is a way of having earthly things without earthly things having you. That's good right there. Put that in the comment section. There is a way of having things without things having you. Glory to God. Oh, I'm going to let me, uh, I, 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 I hear, I, I, I'm getting a revelation now. There is a way of having things without things having you. When your things, your worldly possessions have you, it means that they hold you in captivity. And when you want to do things for God, when you want to spend time with God, you cannot, even though you have a desire to, but those things become strongholds and they keep you in a place. Uh, let's use your home, for example. Uh, many of you, I've been to your homes. Your homes are very nice. Praise the Lord. And yes, oh my goodness, God has been good to you. But if that, listen, one day you're going to have to, you're going to have to uh, exit from that home. Praise the Lord. You have to, you have to uh, thank God for the home or for the car or whatever the case may be. Thank God for it, but don't allow that thing to have you. Don't allow your, your, your materialistic things to have you. You have it. Praise the Lord. So, so 
So Matthew says, seek ye the kingdom. That's priority. Now you're putting things in perspective. Seek ye the kingdom. Hallelujah. Seek the kingdom first. And all these things, praise the Lord, are going to be added to you. God will see to you when you seek him, when you make him a priority. He'll see, he'll see that you get the car. He'll see that you get the house. He'll see that you get the job. He'll see that you get that relationship. Listen, because we can be so focused on something that we want so bad that it, it keeps us, it keeps us depressed and we can be stressed out because it have not came into fruition. But the fact of the matter is, in the spirit realm, if you seek the things of God first, God can release it. And it's just a time, just a matter of time when it comes into full manifestation. I can't hear nobody talking to me. Listen, I'm telling you, if you if you make your priorities, if if you if you prioritize things in the right way, those things will eventually show up in your life. And it becomes a validation of your faith. Faith, of course, being the substance of thing hope, the things hoped for. But the evidence of things that are not seen, your faith allows you to concentrate on what is above and not on things that are on this earth. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you something, family. You've heard this. You've heard this. But some people, uh, it's, it's, it's important that we will hear it again, that we hear it again. He that have ears, let him hear what the spirit is saying, not what Satan is saying. Or you can be listening to the wrong spirit. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. I see you in the comments, Elder Felton. Thank you so much. Priority is so, so very, very important, family. We have to set our priorities. Priorities. Satan is not a priority. No, your soul, your inner man is a priority. Watch this. Verse four says in Colossians chapter three, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. When Christ shall appear. Now he's, Paul is actually talking about <coughs> a statement that he, that he made, um, uh, in one of his previous epistles where he, he's talking about um, how we're going to be caught up. We're going to appear with him. So he says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Watch this. Oh my goodness. Now I'm, going to, I'm getting ready to lose somebody. I'm getting ready to lose some people. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to lose some people, uh, but I hope I can save you today. Watch this. He says, mortify my God. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth. And he give, he give, he begins to name uh, these things uh, that, that your flesh cries out for. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil conspicuous and covetousness, which is idolatry. Same thing, when you set your priorities on earthly things, you make, you make the things, your material, material possessions, you make them an idol. This, this is how, this is, this is what are idol gods, and believe it or not, we still have idol gods. You make things an idol. God said he will have no other God before him. In fact, I really believe with every fiber of my being, this is why some people actually can get something and lose it. Homes going to foreclosures, cars going to foreclosures. You, use your you, you lose your job. You lose your place where you once was because God gave it to you. And if God gave it to you, God can take it away. And we are quick to testify that when God, when we, when we come in, um, uh, when we come in, uh, when we acquire certain things, we're quick to testify what God has done. So if God has done it, if God gave it to you, 
God give it, God can take it away. So I really believe that because some people get so caught up in their worldly possessions uh, that they lose themselves. They lose themselves in the midst of these things. The more God blesses me. Here is something uh, that, that having an attitude of gratitude would do. Uh, having an attitude of gratitude would keep you would keep you grounded. Having an attitude of gratitude doesn't matter um, how much you acquire in your material possessions. Doesn't matter how much money you have. Doesn't matter how many homes you acquire, how many cars you drive, how good your children are doing. You never allow that to be the driving force to, to, to drive you away from God. But having an attitude of gratitude will put you on your knees more. This, this is one of the reasons why I actually pray more now than I've ever prayed before because I realize that God has blessed me. I realize that God has sustained me. God has kept me. Praise the Lord. And I'm so careful that I show God gratitude for the things that he has done for me. Hallelujah. The more God blesses me, the more I'm going to worship him, the more I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to honor him because I realize if he gave it to me, if he literally gave it to me, he can take it away. So when he says here, mortify, therefore your memories, when you're talking about mortify, you're talking about you're talking about dying to who you are in the flesh, dying to those desires that take you away from God. Mortify, the word mortician comes from the word mortify. The mortician is the one that, that, that actually services the body after death, after an individual dies. They call for the mortician and the mortician prepares him. Where you can be your own mortician where you die to those desires that try to take you away from God. Because you don't want that to happen. You got, you got to die to uh, this flesh. This flesh that is that gets lonely at night. The, the, the flesh that cries out uh, for inordinate affection. When the flesh cries out for things uh, that, that, uh, that goes against the will of God. You got to kill it. You got to die to this flesh. There is no good thing that dwells in this flesh. And if you allow your flesh to be the motivation, the driving force behind the things that you do, you'll find yourself doing some things that's out of the will of God. So Paul says you have to mortify uh, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, concuspicious, covetousness, which you, where you are desiring things, praise the Lord. Uh, you're coveting what somebody else has. No, 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 no. God will give you your own. Chapter, verse six says, for which things saith the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. There is a wrath that comes on the children of disobedience. He says, in the which ye also walk sometime when you live in them. I want to encourage your family, uh, let's stay with God. Let's, let's have this attitude uh, that drives us uh, to, <coughs> to serve the Lord with more passion. As we get ready to exit 2020, 2021, going into the year of 2022, let's have a passion for God. Let's have an attitude for gratitude. Let's, let's remember uh, the, the thousands of people that are, that are no longer here, but you are here. God has sustained you. God has kept you. Praise the Lord. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, we serve an awesome God, a loving God. Hallelujah. And verse 10, and I'm getting ready uh, to close here in a few minutes. Verse 10 says, Paul says here, and have put on the new man, which, re, which is renewed in knowledge 
after the image of him that created, created him. We, we are now clothing ourselves with a new mindset, uh, with a new mentality. Praise the Lord. It's the newness of Christ. You know, Paul also says in 2 Corinthians, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Praise the Lord. We have a new way of thinking. And if you are that new person, praise the Lord, what happens because we can, based upon actually when you became that new individual, it's necessary uh, that your mind be renewed. Praise the Lord. Because whatever is new at any given point in time becomes old. And there is a need for your mind to be renewed. That way, uh, you, you stay afresh. You stay abreast of what is happening in your spiritual walk with God. Praise the Lord. You, you stay strong. You stay on the cutting edge. You, 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 you don't allow uh, what's happening after you've been, uh, after you became new, Amen. You don't allow that thing to get old to the point where you feel like you don't need it anymore. You know, we purchase things and we buy things and these, these things get old and uh, praise the Lord. Uh, we get rid of them. We give them away and we get something new. Well, with your, with your um, relationship with God, when you become a new man, it's necessary that you renew your mind, praise God, hallelujah. Because uh, again, whatever is old uh, will eventually, I'm sorry, whatever is new eventually becomes old. And there is a need for your mind to be renewed. How do I renew my mind? Praise the Lord. By staying in the word of God, praise the Lord. By reading his word, by being a worshiper, by having an attitude of gratitude. And I'm afraid some folk, some folk uh, relationship with God has grown stale. Praise the Lord. It's, it's, there's a need for your relationship to be renewed with Christ uh, because um, it was not able to sustain you in this pandemic, we've lost so many Christians. Unfortunately, we've lost a lot of people in this pandemic. Folk are not, folk, they don't have the passion like they used to have. Praise God. They don't, they don't have the drive. They don't have the love. They're not willing to work. You know, you used to serve God. Praise God. You used to be connected. But some way, amen, somehow we've become comfortable with convenience. That's a message in and of itself. We have become comfortable, praise God, with, with being in our residences and having church. You can visit all kinds of churches, praise the Lord. But there is something about it, uh, assembling ourselves together. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, uh, Hebrew says, chapter 10, verse 25, for such is the manner of some, but we should be exhorting one another. You need to encourage somebody that they need to go to church, exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. What day? What day are you talking about, Pastor? It's the day that the prophets of old uh, have informed us about. There is going to come a day, praise the Lord, where men will become lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Uh, there, there, there's coming a time uh, where there is going to be a, a, a falling away. You're talking about apostasy, where people are leaving God. They are abandoning the faith. And we see that happening. And, and I see that day approaching, and it is confirming prophecy. You're talking about, my God, from a theological perspective, 
eschatology that deals with uh, end times. We're, we're, we're living in the end times when things are happening and, 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 and uh, uh, the rapture is soon to come. So he says, so he says uh, in Hebrews, don't forsake to assemble yourselves together uh, because there's something about fellowship. There's something about coming together with the saints and singing songs of Zion and, 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 and worshiping together, having a, cro a corporate worship experience, praise God. Hallelujah. Being in the midst of the saints is just something about just having good fellowship together. Hallelujah. When you hear folk testify of what they've been through, where iron sharpens iron, praise God. Hallelujah. You, you, you're in the midst of people that have a light, precious faith. Glory to God. They've been down, but they got back up. Glory to God. They've had some bad experiences, but they're still here. Some, no doubt, my God, spouses walk out on them. Husband left them. Praise God. Wife abandoned them. Got fired from a job. Glory to God. Had sicknesses in their body. Diagnosed with cancer, with lupus, all kinds of diseases. But God healed them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there's something about two people coming together that have had the same experience when they testify of what God done for them. Praise the Lord. And you listen to them and you tell them what God done for you. Same God, different circumstances. Hallelujah. Same God, different places. Same God, different scenarios. We're serving the same God. It's having an attitude of gratitude, knowing that whatever God done for one, he'll do for another. Hallelujah. I give God praise this morning. I give him, I, I give him praise. I give him glory. I give him honor this morning for the things that God has done for you. The things that he is going to do. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we have a few more days in this year and some of you are going to experience I mean the abundance of God. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter if it happens on the last day. There are still, I'm convinced that there are still some blessings. There are still some blessings on this side. Hallelujah. I know God has preserved some for me in the coming year. No, yeah, you have. Listen, don't leave. Let me tell you, let me tell you a, 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 a business statement. Uh, uh, that, that I've heard people uh, uh, make in times past. Don't leave nothing on the table. Put that in the appointment section. Don't leave nothing on the table. Don't leave nothing on this side. Praise God. Don't forget whatever God has for you on this side of 2020. Before you go into the new year, get everything, get everything, Get everything that God has for you on this side. Praise the Lord. Don't leave nothing on the table. There are still some blessings that God has for you on this side. Praise the Lord. And it has to happen on this side. My God. There are some things that I got on this side. Hallelujah. Some things that I'm preparing for that I know that is coming in 2022. Uh, it's, it's already, it, I know it's coming, hallelujah, but I'm, 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 I'm still waiting, I'm still waiting, hallelujah, Christmas is past, my God, the, the gifts are no longer under the tree, we've unwrapped some, 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 some gifts, but here, hear this word, hear this word, there are some things that God has for you that was not under the tree, it, they, they are not under the tree, but they are in heaven, they're in the spirit realm that God is going to give to you if you maintain what you got. Ooh, that's a word right there. Hallelujah. There is a gift. There is a present that was not under the tree. But here it is. It's, it, it's going to be an exchange. 
It's going to be an exchange between you and God. I, I Listen, I know what I'm talking. I, I know what I'm saying in my spirit right now. There is somebody that's listening to me right now. God is waiting for an exchange. You've been asking him for it, but you have not given him enough praise. Your attitude needs to be adjusted before he give it to you. Woo! Oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, hallelujah, God is saying you've asked him for it. He's willing to release it to you, but your attitude has got to change. Your attitude has got to change before, I, now that's from the Holy Ghost. I don't know who I'm talking to, talking to right now, but I know that I'm talking to somebody right now. You need an attitude adjustment. That's from God. Hallelujah. You need an attitude adjustment. God says it's there. It's there. He's willing to release it. I'm getting ready to go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm getting ready to go, saints. But I'm telling you that God wants to bless you. And, and, and there are some things. There are some things. I might talk about this in Savannah. Hallelujah. Don't leave nothing on the table. Don't leave, don't leave nothing on the table. No, everything, everything. Listen, because, because when you leave it on the table, you are entitled to it. And, and there, there are some things that you may not know by virtue of by virtue of the information that you have. Because whoever you are negotiating with, some things they'll try to cover up. But God is saying, don't leave anything on this side as you prepare to go into the new year. Get every, I want everything that God wants me to have on this side. If it's money, if it's promotion, if it's elevation, whatever it is, don't you go into the new year without getting all your stuff. Don't go into the new year without getting all that God has for you. Some of y'all gonna miss it, but don't you, listen, don't you go into the new year without getting everything that God has for you on this side. That's a word. I want you to put it in the comment. Get it all. Get it all. Praise the Lord. Put it in the comment section. Get everything that God has for you. All right, I'm closing now. We're getting ready to, uh, <laughs> my God, let me get some water. Praise the Lord. I got to preach this some more in Savannah. I got to preach this some more in Savannah. Praise God. David said, I was glad when they said it to me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Glory to God. I want to challenge you. Get it all. Vanessa, get it all. Get it all, Sister Stephanie. I want everything. Everything. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want everything. I know some things are coming in the new year, but I want everything that God has for me. Praise the Lord. I thank God for this opportunity to share with you this morning. Praise the Lord. We bless the Lord. Thank God for each and every one of you. The blessings of the Lord. Thank you, Elder Felton. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow. I'm changing my attitude. Hallelujah. I'm changing my attitude. I'm not going to let these thoughts that are coming to my mind cause me to miss out on God. I'm going to interrogate them. And Y'all know I told you this before. You have to interrogate your thoughts. You know, when when a person is a suspect, they take them into the interrogation room and they ask them a whole lot of questions, you know, about their involvement in, in a crime or something because they're trying to get to the truth. Sometimes you got to interrogate, interrogate your thoughts because the thoughts that you're dealing with, you are not even supposed to be dealing with them. 
where did this thought, how did this, how did this thought get in my mind? How, where did you come from trying to discourage me? Where did you come from, you spirit of suicide? Where did you come from? You evil thought, where did you come from? Telling me that I'm nobody, that nobody loves me. Where did you come from? You got to interrogate your thoughts. Find out where, find out the origin of that thing. Because when you find out the origin where it came from, you don't want to go back there anymore. You got to find out where are these thoughts coming from. Sometimes they're coming from people that you're hanging around. Sometimes it's in the atmosphere. You got this is why you have to you got to guard your heart with all with all diligence. I told you your ears is the mouth and the spirit. And out of the out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, but the mouth the mouth can only speak what has entered into the ear. And sometimes we're cursing our own selves. We, you, you know, you, you, you're cursing your own life. You got to tell yourself you're somebody, you, you're special. I'm not going to commit suicide. I rebuke the spirit of suicide. I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. If you have anybody, if you have anybody that's connected to you, a family member, a friend, I rebuke that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray that God would open up your eyes and give you a spirit of discernment that you will be able to see the depressed family members, the depressed uh, friends that you have. Because, because that spirit is contagious and we bind it right now in the name of Jesus and we have the authority. God said, whatever we bound, bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise the Lord. Thank God for your own uh, this morning. Saints, I want you to uh, uh, to send your, your tithe and your offerings this morning. We can't forget, amen, to support the ministry. Send your tithe and your offering. Remember, uh, we're preparing for our um, watch night service. God is going to bless us real good. Praise the Lord. We talked about the joy of giving on last week. My wife and I, we've been giving all week long. Glory to God. And every time we give, amen, God replenishes. I'm telling you, there is a joy in giving. I love you all so very much. That's it, Sister Tracy. We got to cast out those things. I'm going I'm to I'm talk about that some more uh, because, um, and, and I'm praying that the Lord will, uh, will speak to me uh, as we leave here and, and go to Savannah. I pray that you all will have a super fantastic day uh there if we have any guests that's on here for the first time god bless you please come back and join us again or you can join us uh in savannah this morning i realize a lot of saints uh are, are, are traveling or whatever i thank god we're praying for elder boeing this morning he's speaking in um um uh tennessee memphis tennessee i pray that the lord uh, would bless the word that he would give uh, to him. Thank you, Jesus. I love y'all. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, the listening audience this morning. I thank you for, God, this word that you have put in my spirit, the attitude of gratitude. And we're praying, Lord, that you would have us to have a mind, God, that is set on the things above and not the things that are be beneath us, Lord God. We're praying for your wisdom. We pray, God, that the word of God would dwell richly in us, Lord. I speak to every listening ear this morning. I pray for the spirit of obedience, Lord. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. We pray that you would bless uh, this service at 1115. I thank you right now for the saints of God, for the people of God. Father, we come against every evil thought. We bind the spirit of suicide. We come against mental challenges, Lord God, that will send your people that want your people to be depressed and oppressed. We come against it right now. We decree and declare that we have the victory in every area of our lives. We honor you right now. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. May God bless you, saints. We look forward, those of you that will be joining us 
uh, in Savannah. We're looking forward to it. It will not be a long service. I can tell you that now we're going to uh, go there and we're going to do what the Lord would have us to do. Uh, regardless of who's there, we're going to share. And I pray that the Lord will reward us uh, for uh, our being there on today. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Uh, continue to have uh, a great Christmas season. Um, and uh, we'll be back on next week. Praise the Lord. We'll be uh, here for our Wednesday night spiritual development. But I'll say all of that in our service on uh, today at 11 o'clock. God bless you. Love you. Hope I said something that uh, have encouraged you on today. Amen. Bye-bye.